So today I'm going to be revisiting a topic I covered in an older video of mine with Clyde the Weeaboo, where we looked into and discussed a hypothetical battle between Madara and the members of the Akatsuki. Now while the video has a lot more likes than dislikes, it was still fairly controversial and there were a lot of people who weren't super happy with the outcome of the fight. Now since I kind of have a reputation for being biased towards the Uchiha, and especially towards Madara, I get why people were upset. It may have seemed like Clyde and I weren't being entirely fair to the Akatsuki and like we were jerking Madara off a bit more than we should have. I think the biggest issue with the video is that Clyde and I weren't taking it super seriously. We were kind of goofing off the whole time, making a whole lot of jokes at the expense of the Akatsuki members, so our arguments may not have been as clear as they should have, so hopefully I'll be able to avoid that issue in this video. Like I said earlier, the video caused quite a stir, so I've seen a lot of arguments presented in the Akatsuki's favor, and it's come from a whole bunch of different people. I've seen Reddit threads, tweets, Double for Anime even uploaded a video about it, and a whole bunch of smaller channels did the same, but none of the arguments I've seen have really done anything to change my mind. I get where everybody's coming from, but I think a lot of what everybody has to say is pretty flawed. The most prevalent point that I came across was this idea that if the Akatsuki worked as a team, the sheer power of that teamwork would be enough to make up for how much stronger Madara was than any of them. I think that's a pretty flat and just generally not good argument. Now, Dragon Ball and Naruto obviously have very different rules, but I think everybody would agree with me if I were to say that even if they used the power of teamwork, the Ginyu Force would not be able to defeat Frieza. The Ginyu Force is very similar to the Akatsuki in this analogy, and that its members have very specialized powers. Of course, the Ginyu Force has less members than the Akatsuki does, but even if you threw in Zarban, the Doria Kui, and Saiyan Saga Vegeta to make up for the difference in numbers, it wouldn't matter because Frieza is so much more powerful than the members of the Ginyu Force and the rest of the members of his own army. The same thing is true in the case of Madara and the Akatsuki. Let's take a look at, uh, for example, Deira to better illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. Clyde and I just kind of laughed him off in the original video, and it probably didn't sound like we were being very fair to him. I joked about how I felt he'd be more of a threat to the Akatsuki than an asset, because his explosives tend to cover a pretty large area, and definitely have the potential to harm or even kill some of his teammates. While I still stand by all of that, a lot of people thought that was my only argument, and that's not true. Now that's my own fault, I'll admit I probably should have talked about Datara more extensively, and made it clear that I think even if you take this friendly fire aspect out of the equation, it doesn't matter because nothing Nothing he can do would be effective against Madara anyway. A lot of people specifically mentioned C4 and C0 in their counter arguments and acted like they were some sort of smoking gun or something. And while I'll agree that both jutsu are very impressive, especially considering the point in the manga at which they were used, when we're talking about somebody like Madara, they're completely irrelevant. If Sasuke was able to avoid both jutsu, there's no reason to believe that Madara wouldn't be able to do the same thing. And it's not like Sasuke only survived due to plot convenience, well maybe you could argue that in the the case of C0, but definitely not in the case of C4. He explains in great detail that he was able to see the mini explosives created by the C4 Karua as a sort of giant chakra cloud thanks to his Sharingan. Madara's prowess with the Sharingan is also pretty outstanding, it's a lot better than Sasuke's would have been at the time of his fight with Daedara, and is even implied to be among the greatest of the entire clans, like Madara can tell the difference between a wood clone and a shadow clone just by looking at their chakra flow, so it's possible that he'd be able to observe this cloud in even greater detail, and that's without mentioning the fact that to use C4, Daedara would have to either kill every member of the Akatsuki or tell them to evacuate, which would make it very clear to Madara that he needs to do the same thing. The same goes for C0, if Daedara uses it, he has to come to terms with the fact that pretty much everyone else in the Akatsuki is going to die, and I'm confident that like Sasuke, Madara would be able to use the reverse summoning jutsu to get himself out of there. Even if he couldn't do that, he could just protect himself with the perfect Susano, which is more than capable of tanking a C0 explosion. Madara's base Susano took a hit from Guy's island level Hirudora and he was left without a scratch. Of course, a perfect Susano offers a lot more protection than a base Susano does, and I'm willing to argue that the difference is great enough to make up for whatever difference in destructive power there is present between C0 and Hirudora. I'd also like to mention that Madara tanked a series of direct hits from the Nine Biju without using his Susano to protect himself, so even if Daedara's suicide bomb did manage to break through Madara's perfect Susano, Usano somehow, the remaining force from the explosion likely wouldn't be enough to kill him anyway. Now maybe you can argue that Madara's first instinct upon seeing Daedara start to prepare C0 wouldn't be to bring out the perfect Susano. Like, you know, ah oh, no man, Madara wouldn't know what's about to happen, he wouldn't be prepared. But since Sasuke was able to reverse summon himself in time to avoid dying, I see no reason to believe why Madara wouldn't be able to whip out his Susano in time to protect himself. The series has already made it very clear that the Susano takes no time 
it all to manifest. For example, Itachi activated his in the split second before Kirin hit him. So even if Madara doesn't figure out what's going on until the very last second, which is also pretty unlikely since his Sharingan should be able to let him know that a bunch of chakra is being gathered into a specific place in Daedara's body, he should have plenty of time to protect himself. And if we want to include in-character arguments, it's very possible that Daedara may announce what he's about to do. He may be like, uh, time to take you to the other side, art is an explosion, ha ha ha, or something like that. So like, Madara is fine, C0 isn't an instant win by any stretch of the imagination. What it boils down to is since Sasuke was able to avoid both of Daedara's trump cards, even if you don't agree with anything that I've said up to this point, you have to do some real mental gymnastics and even be a bit dishonest with yourself to convince yourself that there's absolutely nothing Madara could possibly do if either jutsu is used against him. And this is the sort of thing that I was talking about with the Ginyu Force versus Frieza argument. Like, yeah, sure, jutsu like this are a big deal for people fighting at the Jonin and Kage level. But even people at that level of power and skill have jutsu that they can deploy to defend themselves from stuff like this. So when you get to somebody like Madara, who's so many tiers above people like that, stuff that's deadly at the Jonin and Kage level starts to seem laughable in comparison. There's also plenty of other stuff going against Daedara that I haven't even mentioned yet, such as how he was overwhelmed by Sasuke's speed or how quickly he ran out of chakra. But none of that really matters in the first place. Madara could kill Daedara in an instant if he wanted to. Valley of the End Madara can summon Karama and have him fire a Biju bomb straight at Daedara. Edo Madara can summon a Meteor or two if he feels it's necessary. And any version of Madara that has the Renegon can use the Human Path to rip Daedara's soul out of his body. Like, I, I think you get the point. And that's not all he can do to end the fight immediately either. Meanwhile, both of Daedara's trump cards would do nothing against Madara, even if you give him every benefit of the doubt possible. I saw plenty of people also bring up that Sasori could use his poison to kill Madara, and that's actually a fairly strong argument, because no matter how physically strong Madara may be, there's not much he can do to train his internal organs and keep himself safe from the effects of toxins. So if Sasori releases his poisonous gases into the air and Madara happens to inhale them, then he'll probably die. The problem with this is is the same as with Daedara's explosives. Sasori can't safely release a cloud of poison without putting the rest of the Akatsuki's members in danger. The Paths of Pain may be an exception since they're just corpses, but everybody else would drop dead around the same time as Madara did. And even then, I'm not so sure the poison would work anyway. Like, if Sakura can detect it and hold her breath in time to save herself from dying, then there's no reason to believe Madara couldn't. Now, of course, Sasori can just nick Madara with a poison-tipped weapon, but that's gonna be really hard to do against somebody who has a Susano and is also as fast as Madara. Even assuming Madara doesn't use his Susano to protect himself from the poisonous weapons, he's still really nimble, and you'd think if killing him was as simple as poisoning him, one of the Senju would have done it during the Warring States period. In case anybody's forgotten, Madara was fast enough to react to a blitz attempt from KCM2 Naruto, who is faster than KCM1 Naruto, who is faster than the Raikage, who is one of the fastest ninja of all time. On that note, I'm gonna move on to another point I saw pretty frequently. I saw a handful of people claiming that if any of the Akatsuki's members manage to draw even a drop of blood from Madara's body, that it's game over for him because all they have to do is pass the blood to Hidan, then he can kill Madara with his weird Jashin ritual thing. The issue with making this claim is that the Akatsuki would have to successfully injure Madara before he manages to deal with Hidan, and I don't think that's incredibly likely to happen. Yes, sure, the Akatsuki has its strength in numbers, but to say they'd be overwhelmed fighting against Madara is a massive understatement. We saw during his fight against the Allied Shinobi Forces 4th Division that he's more than capable of handling dozens of people at the same time in a Taijutsu confrontation. So even if the entire Akatsuki rushes Madara all at once, he'll be fine for at least a little while. I think this is especially true because only a handful of the Akatsuki's members are actually proficient with Taijutsu. Daedara and Konin have shown almost zero skill with Taijutsu, and the rest of the Akatsuki's members, for the most part, are masters of various forms of Ninjutsu and Genjutsu. It's also important important to keep in mind that he doesn't have to engage the Akatsuki in a Taijutsu battle. He can do what he did against the allied shinobi forces and summon his Susano if anybody gets too close to injuring him. And Madara's ninjutsu kind of speaks for itself. Like, even one of his basic fire jutsu required at least a dozen members of the allied shinobi forces to work together and perform a combined water jutsu to stop it. They didn't even overpower Madara's fire jutsu either, they just cancelled it out. Final Valley Madara would have the Nine Tails on his side, which is a pretty big deal since it's a lot more powerful than anybody in the Akatsuki. Naruto's Eight-Tailed Transformation, which is an incomplete version of one half of the Nine-Tails, was too powerful for Pain to handle, 
and with the exceptions of Obito and arguably Itachi, Pain's the most powerful member of the Akatsuki, meaning that nobody else in the group would be able to do much against the Ninetales either. Edomaro would be completely immune to Hidan's Jashin ritual since he doesn't bleed in the first place, and the Madara that was revived with the Rene Tensei after the conclusion of the fight with Jubito probably wouldn't get hit by any of the Akatsuki's attacks due to the extra sensory powers provided by Sage Mode. Like, he was able to avoid hits from Naruto and Sasuke at the same time before blitzing both of them, and when Tobirama tried to surprise him by teleporting behind him with the flying Raijin Jutsu, it didn't work either. This Madara can also use Limbo, summon the Ghetto Mazo, and use all of the Rinnegan's other abilities like Shinra Tensei. My final argument against Hidan being able to contribute in the fight at all is that he sucks. He was too slow to avoid being caught by Shikamaru's Shadow Possession Jutsu, and this wasn't a one-time thing only either. This happened on two separate occasions in the same fight, and then he got his head sliced off by one attack from Asuma. Since Asuma's chakra blades are sharp enough to do this, I imagine that Madara's Susano swords could do the same thing, meaning that Hidan will probably be a non-factor in this fight. Like with Daedara, if you want to use an in-character argument for Hidan here, he likes to gloat a lot, and it took him a really long time to actually get to performing the Jashin ritual, as in he spends like four or five entire pages just bragging to Asuma about how he's going to die. He also needlessly stabs himself in the leg to make Asuma suffer instead of outright killing him, and if he pulls any of this shit against Madara, he's going to get himself killed immediately. On the general subject of the Akatsuki trying to rush Madara down in a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation, some people may think that I'm being unfair towards the Akatsuki, or biased towards Madara, or a mixture of both, but I honestly don't think that there's much they could do against him in a scenario like this. Madara has Shadow Clones, and if we're talking about any form of Madara post Edo Tensei, then he also has Wood Clones, and the Wood Clones have the confirmed ability of being able to use the Susano. He can make at least 25 of them, and all of them can cloak themselves in a full body Susano. And even without throwing the Susano on the table, 25 copies of Madara Uchiha is a lot to worry about anyway. He also showed during his battle against both the 4th Division and the Raikage that even in the heat of battle, he's able to place people under Sharingan Genjutsu. And since Sasuke's Genjutsu worked on Deidara, and Obito's Genjutsu affected Conan, I think it's a safe bet that one of Madara's Genjutsu would work on plenty of the group's other members. You can try and argue that they'd be able to avoid making eye contact with him, but even the Raikage, who was able to dodge having an Amaterasu shot at him, wasn't able to avoid Madara's Genjutsu forever. Now on the subject of Genjutsu, let's talk about Mr. Sukuyomi himself. I've seen a lot of people that seem pretty convinced that Madara doesn't have any answers to Itachi's Genjutsu. The one I see brought up most frequently is Ephemeral, the one where Itachi just points at his target and traps them in Genjutsu that way. And I don't think this is a serious problem for Madara, because he should be able to see the Genjutsu coming. For example, during the battle that took place when Itachi and Kisame first showed up in Konoha, Kakashi could tell when Itachi was about to use Sukuyomi, which allowed him to preemptively warn Kurenai and Asuma to shut their eyes. This is because his Sharingan let him see that an abnormal amount of chakra was being built up in Itachi's eye. And now you could argue that Madara may not immediately expect Genjutsu when he sees Itachi's chakra begin to gather in his finger, but it's fairly likely that he'd just move out of the way of whatever direction Itachi was pointing in anyway, just to avoid being hit by whatever jutsu he thinks is about to be cast on him. Also, even if he does get caught by one of Itachi's Genjutsu, if he's at a point in the fight where he's already created a clone, then the clone can just use its Sharingan Genjutsu to break him out of Itachi's Genjutsu the same way that Itachi and Sasuke did during the fight against Kabuto. And while I don't normally like to bring up the data books because they tend to make some pretty wacky claims, if you do take them seriously, then according to the third data book, Sasuke was able to break free of Itachi's Sukuyomi using his Sharingan mastery on its own. And since Madara has an eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, and Sasuke broke free using a base Sharingan, not to mention Madara's skill with the base Sharingan should far exceed what Sasuke's was at this point, he should be able to break out without any problems. Even if you don't agree with this, it's not much of a stretch to say that Madara would just avoid looking into Itachi's eyes, since he knows he's dealing with an Uchiha, and they're known for casting visual Genjutsu. And if you want to stick with the finger Genjutsu argument, I mean, there are still a lot of holes in it. Like, for instance, Madara could just end up moving around too quickly throughout the entire fight for Itachi to point at him for long enough to activate the Genjutsu, and even if that doesn't end up being the case, it's also possible that Ephemeral only works on its target as intended if the target makes eye contact with the caster's finger. I say this because Naruto was only trapped in the Genjutsu after looking directly at Itachi's finger, and Itachi also didn't even think to use it against Kabuto in a situation where you'd think it'd be perfect since Kabuto was acting like he was completely immune to any Genjutsu Sasuke or Itachi could throw at him, and something like this that allegedly doesn't require the target's eyesight to work, I mean surely that'd catch Kabuto off guard and would probably be pretty effective. 
effective. But both Itachi and Sasuke acted like Izanami was this busted revolutionary jutsu just because it worked on blind people, so that makes me feel like Ephemeral isn't nearly as powerful as everybody seems to think it is. Now Izanami would probably work on Madara if Itachi successfully cast it on him, but I don't think he'd be able to. Madara's shown through his recognition of plenty of jutsu that you wouldn't expect him to know about that his knowledge of the ninja arts is pretty extensive, and he seems to know quite a bit about anything related to the Uchiha clan in particular, so I see no reason to believe that he doesn't know what Izanami is, and since he likely is aware of what it does and the setup required to perform it, he should be more than capable of taking the steps necessary to prevent Itachi from using it on him. Another thing about Izanami is for Itachi to use it, he has to disperse his Susano, and as strong as Itachi is, I don't think he'd survive for very long in a fight against Madara without its added protection. Speaking of Itachi Susano, let's go ahead and talk about it, specifically the Totsuka Blade and the Yada Mirror, since they're the only reasons everybody hypes it up so much. So there's this widespread idea that the Yada Mirror is an invincible shield that can change its size, shape, and properties, and this is all pretty baseless. The only things we've seen it protect Itachi from are a series of explosions created by a bunch of paper bombs thrown at it by Sasuke, and Kirin. And while these are both kind of impressive, Kirin being the standout example here, neither of them come close to generating the kind of force that a single swing from the sword wielded by Madara's perfect Susano would. And even if we take into account what the databook says about how the Yadamira can change its properties in accordance with whatever attack it's colliding with, nowhere on the page does it say the Yadamira is infinitely durable. Even if it was invincible, we know that it's not omnidirectional because we can clearly see the Susano move its arm to properly position the shield against oncoming attack. This is something that wouldn't need to happen if the Yadamira could just expand and wrap itself around Itachi Susano to keep it from breaking, so Madara could just avoid the shield and hit the Susano anywhere else and it would probably shatter to pieces and Itachi would get cut in half. Now on the subject of the Totsuka Blade, it wouldn't work on Madara either. I know it's supposed to be able to seal anybody it pierces, but how in the world is Itachi supposed to stab Madara with the Totsuka Blade when he's all the way down here and Madara's all the way up there? You could argue that all Itachi has to do to seal Madara is stab any part of the Susano, but that's probably not how it works. During Orochimaru's brief appearance in the middle of Itachi's fight with Sasuke, Itachi chooses to stab Orochimaru's body specifically even though it's further away from him than any other part of the Eight-Headed Serpent. This kind of implies that to seal somebody in the Susano Gourd, Itachi can't just stab something that's connected to them, he has to stab the person themselves. Madara can counter Itachi Susano through other means too, like he could summon a wooden dragon or a bunch of trees to immobilize it if we're talking about Edo Madara, so Itachi doesn't pose any sort of serious threat to him. Moving on to Pain, I want to say that he's a big deal because I don't want it to seem like I'm downplaying him, but even if all six paths worked as a team, I can't see them being much of a factor here. First of all, Edo Madara and any version of Madara that comes after that can counter any of Pain's Renegon Jutsu by using his own Renegon Jutsu. And even setting that aside, the paths of Pain aren't very durable. Konohamaru took out the Naraka path with a single Rasengan, Naruto took out both the Asura path and the Preta path respectively with a single punch, and he was able to knock the Animal path out of commission just by hitting it with a Rasengan barrage. The Animal path summons weren't super durable either. Two of them went down to a single Odama Rasengan each, meanwhile Naruto had to hurl like a hundred of those things into the Nine Tails to do any sort of meaningful damage to it, and he had to slam dozens of them into one of Madara's oncoming wood release jutsu just to stop it from killing everybody standing behind him. So Madara probably wouldn't have a very hard time getting rid of any of the Paths of Pain, with the only possible exception being the Diva Path. Even then, the only things that the Diva Path could really do to him would be to use Chibaku Tensei or a Chaotic Shinra Tensei. These are pretty large-scale attacks, but again, because we're talking about Madara Uchiha, they don't matter too much. We already know that the Nine Tails is easily capable of breaking free from a Chibaku Tensei, so I'm pretty sure that Madara's perfect Susano would be able to do the same thing. It's not even like he'd get trapped inside of the Chibaku Tensei and need to break out in the first place, though. Like, if Itachi, Naruto, and B could destroy a much stronger version of the Gravity Sphere that the Diva Path would be using against Madara here, then a swing from Madara's perfect Susano would certainly be able to get the job done. We've also seen a perfect Susano cut multiple Chibaku Tensei satellites in half before, and yeah, sure, the person doing it was Sasuke, who's stronger than any of the versions of Madara that I'm talking about. 
But the person dropping these Chibaku Tensei satellites was Six Paths Madara, who is also way stronger than Pain. So I think it sort of evens out. Then on the subject of Chaotic Shinra Tensei, if the perfect Susano can tank a C0, it should also be able to tank one of these. Madara should also be able to counter with a Chaotic Shinra Tensei of his own, and I'd argue that it would be a lot more powerful than one of Pain's would. But that's a bit less concrete than the perfect Susano argument, and it also doesn't apply to Valley of the End Madara, so it's not super important. Then finally, of course, there's is the fact that Pain can't use Chaotic Shinra Tensei or Chibaku Tensei without killing the rest of the Akatsuki members, as was the case with Daedara's C0 and Sasori's Poison. I don't think I really need to address Kakazu or Conan. I mean, Conan's a complete non-factor here. Like, yeah, she did do that whole 600 billion paper bombs thing against Obito, but that clearly required a lot of prep time. And any of her paper jutsu, aside from something that extreme, would be completely ineffective against a Susano, perfect or not. I mean, I guess Kakazu might be able to do something, but I can't think of anything substantial. As we know, Madara fought Hashirama to a near standstill, meanwhile Kakazu's attempt to assassinate Hashirama obviously didn't go too well. Naruto also single-handedly took out two of his hearts, and Kakashi did the same thing. What makes that even worse is that we're not talking about Fourth War Kakashi, this is early shipping in Kakashi without all of his crazy Raiton and Kamui nonsense, so somebody like Madara would be way too much for him to handle. Kisame is pretty powerful, but he's not as strong as as Itachi or Pain, and he doesn't have any attacks that are on the same level as C0, like Daedara. So I can't see him making much of a dent in Madara's defenses either. He did nearly beat B, which is pretty impressive, and he also survived getting hit point blank by a powered up Hirudora. And while he wasn't in any condition to fight after being hit by the Hirudora, it's still impressive that he survived it regardless. But like, what could he do against Madara? I mean, of course he could fuse with Samehara and then just summon the giant lake, but Madara could respond with the perfect Susano, and also the giant giant lake would heavily restrict the movements of the other Akatsuki members. Their ability to do any sort of damage to Madara would be inhibited as well, since Daedra's explosives probably wouldn't work nearly as well underwater, and I can't think of too many other people who'd be able to effectively fight Madara underwater, so I don't see that being super useful here either. The last person I want to talk about is Obito, and now if Obito's on the team, then that means Sasori is dead, but even if you want to include Sasori, like, this is, that doesn't make a gigantic difference, but yeah, a lot of people seem to think that Obito would be a real problem for Madara, and they're right, Obito's ability to phase through attacks is pretty difficult to deal with, but the thing is, Obito doesn't have a lot of attacks that are high in destructive power. He'll have to rely on using Kamui to suck Madara into his pocket dimension, and for him to do that, he has to leave his body open to taking damage. We also know that Obito isn't incredibly durable. He can't sustain a very extensive amount of damage. For example, when he fought Minato, he practically gave up after being hit by one Rasengan, and Conan's explosive tags did a lot more damage to his body than I expected them to. Now maybe Conan's paper bombs are particularly powerful or something, I'm not really sure, but what I do know is they're not as powerful as a lot of the attacks that Madara can dish out. And since we're talking about Orange Mask Obito, Madara is definitely fast enough to respond to any of Obito's attempts to suck him into the Kamui dimension. Like as soon as he sees that Obito's vulnerable, he's going to capitalize on it, and like I said earlier, Obito can't survive repeatedly taking the kinds of hits that Madara can dish out. Now some of you may think that I'm giving Madara too much credit and acting like he's faster than he actually is. But here, on this page, we can see Obito failing to sneak up on KCM1 Naruto. Meanwhile, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Madara has casually reacted to a blitz attempt from KCM2 Naruto. Now I know Obito can use Izanagi, but all that should mean is Madara will have to kill him a second time. And he should definitely be prepared for Izanagi to be used against him, since he acted as Obito's mentor for a short period of time. Now I'm not saying taking Obito out will be the easiest thing he's ever done, but it's something he's certainly capable of, and I have no doubt that he'd be able to do it a second time in a row. Now one thing a handful of people criticized Clyde and I for doing in the original video is talking more about how Madara would stack up against each individual member of the Akatsuki than how he would handle fighting the group as a whole. But I wasn't trying to convince anybody that Madara could beat each member of the Akatsuki on their own. I don't think anybody needs to be convinced of that. Everybody knows Madara could beat Sorcery or Data or Pain or whatever in a one-on-one. -on -one. The point that I was trying to get across in this video is that none of them have even the slightest chance of beating Madara. And so even if you were to team them up with eight or nine other people of similar skill and power, it wouldn't matter because of who their opponent is. And while I get why people think otherwise, I'm not saying this because of some bias I have towards Madara. I wouldn't claim that the Akatsuki could beat Hashirama either, and I'm even willing to argue that KCM2 Sage Mode War Arc Naruto would be too much for them to handle. And it's not that I don't respect the Akatsuki. I get that they're very strong, especially when working as a group. But when we're 
are dealing with somebody who C0 and Chibaku Tensei are completely worthless against, what on earth are the Akatsuki supposed to do to win against somebody like that? I mean, if not for the perfect Susano, I'd be much more inclined to say that they could at least beat Valley of the End Madara, but then as you get to later forms of Madara with the Renegon and Wood Release and Limbo and all this other crazy nonsense, it starts to get pretty easy to imagine how the Akatsuki would end up feeling a bit overwhelmed in a fight against this guy. That's really all I have to say. If you disagree, feel free to leave any arguments or counterpoints in the comments below. If you have any ideas for future video topics, make sure to leave them in the comments or shoot me a mention on Twitter. But uh, yeah, that should be everything. So thanks as always for watching the video all the way to the end, and make sure you have a great rest of the day. Until my next video, I'll talk to you later. Swag Kage out. Bye.